Well, it's been a busy week for the Hackney Kestrels. This is their fourth match, in, fourth match in four days. And the Hackney lineup at number one is Trevor Banks. Number two is Mark Terry. At number three, Barry Thomas, the skipper. At number four, Andy Galvin. At number five, Kevin Teager. Number six, Paul Whitaker. And number seven, the new young reserve on loan from Birmingham, Lyndon Warner. And the Stoke lineup as they leave the grid there. There we have the number one, Tom Owen, going in for the toss up. His teammates, number two, Paul Thorpe. Number three, Nigel Crabtree. At four, Ian Stead. Five, Ashley Pullen. Six, Steve Bishop. And seven, Graham Jones. And the news is that Hagney have won the toss and will take gates one and three in heat number one. So those are the two sides here in action tonight at Luma Road. Well, Stoke are unbeaten at home here at this uh, Newcastle Stadium. They have yet to really show tremendous form away, although they are on plus four. They head the league table, which is a curiosity because their combined averages on the green sheets are the lowest in the league, and yet they are top of that very league. For Hackney, they've yet to show anything really away from home. They won at Weymouth by 40 points to 38 back on Easter Monday. That was against a team that was still without Martin Yates. And since then, they've taken defeats on two northern tours. They lost at Edinburgh, at Berwick, at uh, Middlesbrough, and at Glasgow last night, where they lost by 12 points. The loss at Middlesbrough was by six points. They lost by 16 at Berwick and by 10 at Edinburgh. So as you can see, the Kestrels yet to break the 34-point barrier away from home, apart from that Weymouth match. After a very impressive start to the season, a lot of riders' form has deserted them in recent weeks, and indeed luck has turned against them, because they have Paul Bosley currently out injured with a broken finger. And just at that very time, he slipped down out of the heat leader berth on the green sheet. So no rider replacement for the missing man. Well, there we see Tom Owen, the number one and skipper of the Signal Potters, the former Newcastle Diamond, who started his career back at Barrow in the early 1970s. A mighty figure in National League circles until a bad injury that, at Newcastle left him with a badly twisted leg. He's back on form, though, his uh, National League average this year, back over double figures. And indeed, on the green sheets, he's over 10.5 points a match. So Tom Owen right back in speedway with a bang now. The full lineup for heat number one. On the inside in white, it's Trevor Banks. His average now up over the nine point mark. He's really thriving on, after the move from Crayford over to Hackney. So Banks goes on the inside in white. Next to him in red, Tom Owen. Gate three in yellow and black. Young Mark Terry out of a reserve berth with the injury to Bosley. And the outside man in blue, Paul Thorpe. Well, Paul Thorpe, a former Birmingham low knee to Berwick. Now with the signal potters. Very, very nearly signed for Edinburgh this year. It even appeared in the press session. Well, showing first out of the tapes, the tight one between Banks and Owen. Banks should thrive on this circuit. And it's Banks who leads. Owen is second. Thorpe is third. At the back is Terry. Owen now going through underneath Banks, going down the back straight. And down goes Trevor Banks. Trevor Banks a faller from first, now literally to last. And now breaking through for second. It's Mark Terry, but the red stop lights are on. We await the referee's exclusion light to be shown. It looks like that could well be the, the white exclusion light to be switched on, and it is. The referee stops the race, that's Mr. Alan Todd, and excludes the rider in white, Trevor Banks. So Hackney in with problems in heat number one, because Owen and Thorpe look very good up against young Mark Terry. Trevor Banks then excluded from heat number one. He walks back to the pits, a disappointed man, had the lead until Owen came underneath him. Certainly there have been a tower of strength for Hackney so far this year. Well, we've got uh, a drive-in speedway here at Stoke Speedway. As you can see, you can drive your car in onto the back straight and park and watch the speedway for the comfort, from the comfort rather, of your own car. We have the three remaining, remaining, remaining riders at the starting gate for heat number one, the rerun. The inside gate, of course, blank with the exclusion of Trevor Banks. So on gate two in red, it's Tom Owen. Gate three, yellow and black, Mark Terry. And gate four in blue, Paul Thorpe. It'll be interesting to see how Hackney shape up tonight. They must be tired after racing at home on Wednesday, at Middlesbrough Thursday, Glasgow on Friday. And Terry is left by the two signal potters. Owen on the inside, and Thorpe up on his shoulder in second. Mark Terry back in third. Owen and Thorpe settling down into a powerful pairing. Paul Thorpe's average now on the six-point mark. Slightly down on his average with Berwick. An emerging force, Paul Thorpe. And the Mo 
at the moment being challenged by Terry, whose bike is visibly slowing as he leaves the turn. So Tom Owen and Paul Thorpe seemingly set for a 5-0 at the moment, unless Terry can get that bike moving again. You can see he's still making some progress. It looks like he might have had a plug lead come adrift. It's still a very, very slow progress around the track for young Mark Terry. Only had a couple of rides for Crayford last year due to the uh, solidity of the Kestrel scoring. Now has a regular team base. And Tom Owen leads. Second is Paul Thorpe. Mark Terry a good way behind. Just cruising around now for the extra point to stop a 5-1, becoming a 5-0. Well, around the final turn, another post 5-1 there for the signal pass. It's a win for Tom Owen. Second in blue was Paul Thorpe and third in yellow and black on the nailing machine, Mark Terry. The lap bike's obviously taken a fair bit of punishment this week and it's ailing here at Stoke tonight in heat number one for Mark Terry. A 5-1 heat win there for Stoke gives us an opening score line of Stoke 5, Hackney 1. Well, Stoke opening up with a 5-1 there, have a four-point lead going into heat number two. On the inside in red, we have Steve Bishop, surprisingly down at reserve, rode in the British Junior Championship last week. Didn't get too much success, down, though, down at Canterbury. Next to him in yellow and black is Lyndon Warner. Gate three in blue, Graham Jones. He's really made an impact in a short spell here at Stoke. The outside man in white, Paul Whitaker, 16 years of age. Jones is in the middle of them. He's got the drive on the turn. Although he's cut out, coming out of the turn by the very impressive Lyndon Warner. He looked good on his Hackney debut against Edinburgh on Wednesday night at Waterland Road. Lee's heat number two, and now coming through on the inside is the rider in red, Steve Bishop. And in the meantime, Whitaker is through in front of Jones for third place. A fighting performance by the Hackney Reserves, but they're being headed by the experienced Steve Bishop, although his experience not tremendous. Former Exeter rider, or rather still an Exeter rider, but on loan to Stoke now with the Falcons in the British League. And Bishop leads heat number two. He's got quite a good lead over the second place man in yellow and black, Lyndon Warner. Looks a very useful acquisition for the Kestrels. There you can see the lead enjoyed by Steve Bishop. Into the final lap, a 3-3 at the moment, and Graham Jones is laboring at the back trying to catch up with the Hackney Reserve, Paul Whitaker. It looks like Jones is going to be shut out this time by the Hackney pairing. Around the final turn, it's a win for Steve Bishop. Second in yellow and black was Lyndon Warner. Third in white, Paul Whitaker. And fourth in blue, Graham Jones. So heat two results in a 3-3 drawn heat. And the score after two races, Stoke eight and Hackney four. Good performance, though, by the reserves there for Hackney, suggesting that maybe they might have a bit of help at that end of the team. Steve Bishop, though, really showing that his place of reserve is not entirely justified. Well, we just saw Steve Bishop down in the reserve berth for Stoke, and moving out of that reserve berth into the team replacing him is Ian Stead. Now, the gap in the green sheet average is very narrow. Ian Stead's on 5.68 and Steve Bishop on 5.44, but it really has been a success story for Stead so far in his first full season of racing. Rode last year on a joint basis in Milton Hall and Stoke's second halves. Milton Hall hoped to sign him, but in, instead, in fact, if we can use that term, ended up with the Stoke Potters. Of course, Eric Stead is the team manager here at Luma Road and the full lineup for heat number three on the inside in yellow and black. is Andy Galvin for Hackney. Next to him in red, Ashley Pullen, gate three in white, Kevin Teager, and gate four in blue, Ian Stead. Hackney team reshuffled in recent weeks following the injury to Bosley. Teager and Galvin now paired at 5 and 4 after Teager used to ride with Thomas at 1 and 2. And showing first out of the gate, Ian Stead. And they really have got a good crop of youngsters here at Luma Road. Stead leads, Pullen's back in third, coming up on the outside of Andy Galvin. And Galvin making progress on the pit turn, but there's a gap there on the inside for Pullen. And Pullen trying for unsuccessful at the back in white it's Kevin Teager the former Scunthorpe stag Andy Galvin a local product with the old Crayford Kestrels Galvin sucks in second Stoke have the 4-2 instead leading the way and doesn't he instead look a good prospect comfortable lead here in heat number three being probed gradually by Andy Galvin actually pulling back in third place and this is the kind of second string strength that's put Stoke on top of the National League one lap to go, the heat leader in third, but the second string is winning the heat for Stoke in the form of Ian Stead. 
dead leads around the final turn and the race settling down into a 4-2 around that very final turn. It's a win in blue for Ian Stead. Second in yellow and black, Andy Galvin. Third in red, Ashley Pullen. And fourth in white, Kevin Teager. Stoke Potters taking a 4-2 there in heat number three to open up a six-point lead now. It's Stoke Signal Potters 12 and Hackney Kestrels 6 now after three heats. Heat four and Hackney already beginning to lose their grip on this match as the Signal Potters surge ahead. They have a six-point lead as we arrive at heat number four. On the inside gaze in red, we have Nigel Crabtree for Stoke. Next to him in white, inquiring where the green light is, Barry Thomas. He must have been on this circuit a couple of times before now. Maybe they moved the light. Gate three in blue is Steve Bishop. And gate four in yellow and black, Lyndon Warner. Well, it looks a strong pairing for Stoke. Nigel Crabtree's average over the nine and a half point mark. Barry Thomas just under 0.2 below Nigel Crabtree. Steve Bishop, the winner of heat number two, and Lyndon Warner, the second place man behind him. Should be a good heat number four. Hackney really do need to establish a heat winner. We're not going to get it this time. The way Crabtree makes the gate there. Nigel Crabtree leads on his shoulder in yellow and black. Lyndon Warner, and this really is a star performance by Warner so far. Very little National League experience. And yet giving Crabtree one or two things to think about back in second. Third place man, Barry Thomas, at the back in blue, Steve Bishop. And Bishop coming underneath Thomas, but he's protected by Warner. And Hackney settling down, looking for a 3-3. Oh, now Bishop going through underneath Thomas. And Bishop is through into third place, Thomas trailing. And this is a surprise, Barry Thomas struggling here in heat number four in this Stoke crowd. Certainly raising the rafters here at Luma Road, seeing their team go further ahead here in heat number four. And there he goes all the way, Steve Bishop from last to second for the 5-1. Linda Warner brushed aside and Bishop at reserve is a vital tactical situation for the Stoke Potters. And Crabtree rounds the final turn to a tumultuous reception from the home crowd. Crabtree wins, second Steve Bishop, a marvellous ride there by the Exeter Loney. Third place in yellow and black, Linda Warner. And fourth in white. A visibly tiring Barry Thomas. It looks like this four match and four day schedule is getting a bit much for Hackney because after four races now here at Luma Road, Stoke Signal Potters lead by 17 points to so the Kestrels 7. <laughs> Ashley Pullen in red instead in blue for Stoke Signal Potters here in heat number five. And certainly Hackney look of well tired, well weary team here at Luma Road this evening. Ashley Pullen, former Rye House, Peterborough rider, certainly got a, a controversial past in some cases. Had to, walked out of a meeting here recently before the racing started over a dispute with his sponsor. He's been provided with a full set of bikes this year. And the fiery character often can turn his fire off track as well as on it. A member of the 1980 League Championship winning Rye House team. His career has gone up since. He was a middle order rider with the Rockets, now a fully fledged heat leader, disappearing into the pits. There in blue, instead, you saw him ride so well in heat number three to record a victory for the Potters when he and Pullen took a 4 2 over Galvin and Teager. Now, just coming into view once more is Ashley Pullen. And now here come the Kestrels in white, Trevor Banks, the faller first time out, and, and in yellow and black, a tactical substitute replacing the uh, man with engine trouble, Mark Terry, it's Andy Galvin. So Andy Galvin, the first tactical for Hackney here tonight in heat number five. Second place for Galvin in heat number three between Stead and Pullen. So he split the pairing last time. Trevor Banks expected by many to be a tower of strength for Hackney here tonight. He goes off the inside gate, and he's made that gate. Closed in by Stead going into the turn and fighting for third place at the moment. Andy Galvin through into second, and Hackney striking back here in heat number five. And my goodness, they need to, a 10-point deficit. Trevor Banks leads. Andy Galvin's with him, and the tactical substitution paying off for the Kestrels. Third in blue, Ian Stead, and at the back, Ashley Pullen. Well, Pullen seems to be in for one of his quiet nights here tonight. Stead taking up the challenge in heat number five. Hackney riding home for the 5-1, but Stead snapping at their heels. Oh, a 
and there's trouble. Banks in trouble catching the back wheel of his own rider, and that's the chance for Stead. Already blanket Speedway going out of that turn. He instead having a gap for a moment to go through, went for it, and it suddenly closed in his face. Hackney desperately hanging on to this 5-1. One, one lap remaining. Instead, still buzzing. Ashley Pullen looking well out of it at the back. Stead going for the outside line, lifting on the middle of the turn. And Hackney just holding on around that pit turn for the final time. Instead being denied in third place. It's the 5-1 for Hackney. First man home in white, Trevor Banks. Second in yellow and black, Andy Galvin. Third in blue instead. And fourth in red, Ashley Pullen. Well, not the best of evenings so far for Pullen. Hackney taking a 5-1 there in heat number five to close the gap to six points. Much more manageable scoreline of Stoke 18 and Hackney 12. Well, the Hackney Kestrels reminded the signal potters that they're still in this match by taking that 5-1 in heat five. Now we move into heat six. And we have on the inside in blue Paul Thorpe, although he's going to be moved over by the Hackney, no, the Hackney number three, Barry Thomas, because Hackney is six points down and they have choice of gate positions. Although Stoke technically should have them in the even heats and Hackney in the odd heats, any team six or more points behind, of course, can have choice of gate positions. That Hackney do. Or that, rather, that option Hackney take. Here in heat number six, on the inside of white, it's Barry Thomas. Next to him in the red helmet colour, Tom Owen. Gate three in yellow and black, Paul Whittaker. And gate four in blue, Paul Thorpe. Well, Owen and Thorpe took that 5-1 in heat number one to open up the Potters' lead. Barry Thomas finished last in his first ride. And Thomas beat to the turn and some marvellous gating there by the signal Potters pairing of Owen and Thorpe. Thorpe coming around the outside of Thomas for second place now. Well at the back is Whitaker. Thomas still battling on the inside line. Thorpe having to open up the throttle. Heading out into the dirt and getting the grip. Thomas still charging on the inside. Showing a great deal more fight here. And uh, yes, a lot of experience showing there as he goes underneath Paul Thorpe for second place. Barry Thomas, a long-serving rider for Hackney and the Hawks days. He's had a testimonial back in 1979. Now back with Hackney following the move of his former team, Crayford, into his old haunt. And going past Tom Owen down the back straight, and this is a surprise here. Thomas last in his first ride, now coming right back into form here in heat number six, leading the way now. But he looks weary in his first ride, he looks more than refreshed here in heat number six. Thomas leads, second is Owen, third is Thorpe. I don't think the Potters knew what hit them there. And at the back in yellow and black, Paul Whittaker around the final turn. That's the way it stays. Barry Thomas wins. Owen and Thorpe second and third. And Whittaker at the back. So Thomas saves the heat for Hackney. Goes to shake the hand of Tom Owen. And Hackney draw the heat after it looked like Stoke. We're going to take a 5-1 and the score now. Stoke 21, Hackney 15. Still six points in it and Hackney can still use tactical substitutes. consistent feature of racing here tonight has been Stoke Potter's eagerness to get to the start. I think in every heat they've been the first pairing up to the line. We're now joined by Kevin Teager and White. He goes off the inside gate. The last place in heat number three for Kevin. Next to him in blue, Steve Bishop. A win and a paid win unbeaten by a Kestrel so far. And I'm sure you remember that heat four when he came from last to take second place behind Nigel Crabtree. Certainly looks a very useful acquisition for the signal potters. Gate three, yellow and black, is Andy Galvin, who combined with Trevor Banks for a 5-1 to bring things back a little in heat number five for Hackney. And on the outside grid, in red, it's Nigel Crabtree. Crabtree, former leading light with the Scunthorpe Stags last year. And they're already for heat number seven, the halfway mark in the 13 heat contest. pretty invincible rather here at Stoke. Well, Owen went the way of Barry Thomas in the heat number six. Crabtree, though, maintaining his winning run out in front here in heat number seven. And in the meantime, his partner's making his work, making his way up at the back. Steve Bishop, could we get another last to second? Looks to be struggling at the moment. He's lost his blue helmet color, chasing the rider in white. Kevin Seeger down the back straight. Tucked in in second on the inside line, Andy Galvin. All eyes on Bishop, though. Galvin, though, closing in. Nigel Crabtree, but can Bishop do what he did before? Tailing Kevin Seeger. It looks like it'll be unlikely that Bishop gets all the way now, just over one lap remaining, if indeed he gets anything at all. Crabtree in command. 
So it's Crabtree first, Galvin second, Teague third, and Bishop fourth. Hagney holding on to the Potters now, although there is a six-point deficit still to be made up, but they still have the use of tactical substitutes. And, of course, he take that favourite race is coming up next. A win in red for Nigel Crabtree, second in yellow and black, Andy Galvin, third in white, Kevin Teager, and fourth in blue, he couldn't do it this time, Steve Bishop. A 3-3 drawn heat hits Stoke 24, Hackney 18. And as I mentioned, heat 8 coming up next. Of course, that's the race without any heat leaders. And I'm sure that Hackney will be using tacticals in that one. And here is seat number eight. On the inside grid in white, the Hackney tactical substitute replacing Mark Terry. In white, Trevor Banks. Next to him in the blue helmet colour for Stoke, Graham Jones. Next to him in yellow and black, Lyndon Warner. And gate three, gate four rather in red, Paul Thorpe. Well, it's uh, a measure of the faith in Lyndon Warner that he's been left in here in heat number eight when Barry Thomas could have been used as a tactical alongside Banks. Certainly Warner has been fighting very well. Remind you, he goes in yellow and black. Graham Jones scoreless in heat number two. He'll be out to improve on that. Off gate two in blue. Paul Thorpe, a second and a third. He's had a bonus point in both rides. And Thorpe makes the gate off the outside. In the meantime, Jones stops Banks going through. On Jones, locked up. Just going into the turn and Banks couldn't avoid him. The red stop lights go on and the blue exclusion light shows. It's an exclusion for Graham Jones and uh, several of the Stoke fans not, un not too happy with that one, but I'm sure you can see that as Jones went in there, he spun round, he locked up and then Banks hit him. It wasn't the case of it being the other way around. That's the way it looked to me. In the meantime, though, they gather around the fallen machinery and riders trying to untangle. Well, there's quite a mess out there. Well, the picture speaks for itself there, no harm done, apart from a slightly bent machine for Trevor Banks. Trevor Banks fit to take his place in the rerun of feet number eight, and Graham Jones, I will once more confirm, excluded from the rerun, and the Stoke fans none too happy about that one. It's a slightly heated atmosphere here at Stoke as the riders come to the line for the rerun of heat number eight on the inside in white. It's Trevor Banks, not number one in popularity with the Stoke fans at the moment. Gate two is blank, gate three in yellow and black. It's Lyndon Warner, the outside man in red, Paul Thorpe. Well, Hackney have the advantage of the two inside gates, although some gating off gate four has been good tonight, certainly by Thorpe. And so it proves again here in heat number eight, Thorpe heads to the turn. And the Hackney tactical not paying off here. Thorpe protecting the heat for Stoke. Thorpe leads, second is Banks, third is Warner. And the 3-3 drawn heat looks the order of the day here in heat number eight. That will protect the Stoke six-point lead quite nicely. And Hackney not seeming to have quite that extra edge that they might have had if they'd come here as a one-off rather than at the end of a tour. Stoke a fine side though justifying their top of the table tag. The away win at Peterborough and two away draws to their credit so far. One of those at Scunthorpe. Tensing the, St the Scunthorpe Stags 100% home record. So Thorpe leads. He's got a very good lead also now over Trevor Banks in second. A significant race here for Stoke. The six point lead is preserved by Paul Thorpe and that's the most useful rider. As to Stoke all the way down through the lineup, a very solid team. That's proved there in Heat 8 by the win for the number two rider, Paul Thorpe. Second in white, Hackney's number one, Trevor Banks. And third in yellow and black, Lyndon Warner. A 3-3 drawn Heat and the score now after eight races. Stoke 27, Hackney 21. Five to go. 
still that six point gap separating the two sides. We've had three consecutive drawn heats now. And lining up for heat number nine on the inside grid in red is Ashley Pullen. One point from two starts. In yellow and black, tactical substitute replacing Paul Whittaker, Mark Terry. One ride, one point on an ailing machine. Gate three in blue instead. Gate four in white, Barry Thomas. Shut out on the outside and getting locked up with Ian Stead on going through the fence. A bad crash there in heat number nine. And they'll both be lucky to walk away from that one. Ian Stead's blue helmet colour showing there and Barry Thomas down with him. Very, very difficult to call that one. Looked like the two of them just locked up going into the turn and bailing out straight through the safety fence here at Stoke Speedway. And the race has been stopped in the interest of safety. And it's, we don't have an exclusion light showing. Um, there won't be any and it will be a rerun with all four riders. The referee decreeing that that was bunching on the first turn. No one to blame. It was just one of the things. The speedway, all four riders left back or allowed back in the rerun here in heat number nine. That is, of course, providing their fit. Well, instead, just getting to his feet after sitting on the centre green, you can see he seems to have hurt his leg, the back of his leg there. Very tender there. Still waiting for news on Barry Thomas, though. The Hackney camp looks like Stead might just be fit to take his place in the rear run. There's Crabtree in with number three showing, and Steve Bishop out there to inquire about the instead. But the, I think the more serious worry is for Barry Thomas, who is still down on the dog track with a huddle of people all around him. And the Hackney riders now going out to see him. In the meantime, as Stead walks back to the pits. And there uh, is the scene on the dog track with the Hackney riders anxiously gathering round. It's not been a good tour for Hackney. Two defeats in two nights. They seem to be heading for another defeat here tonight, certainly if Barry Thomas is unfit to take any further part in the meeting. And St John's Ambulance Brigade men in there, and if Thomas, or rather if Hackney lose Thomas, in addition to the already injured Paul Bosley, be a very serious blow to their title aspirations. Fortunately, though, I think Hackney have got 14 tournaments coming up soon, so they have a break from racing, by which time Bosley will be back. We await news, though, on the state of Barry Thomas. in the meantime more practical considerations have to be taken into account a new board is required to be put into the safety fence here at Stoke well as the board is put back in place Barry Thomas walks away from the scene of the crash limping slightly going onto the centre green in the middle of that huddle you can see Thomas being helped along so it looks like said and Thomas may well be fit for the rerun of heat number nine well, Barry Thomas and the instead both fit and able to take their places in the rerun of heat number nine. And the full lineup once more on the inside in red, Ashley Pullen. Off gate two, yellow and black, Mark Terry. Gate three in blue, instead. Gate four in white, Barry Thomas. point from two starts for Pullen so far. His partner, Ian Stead, fighting through on the inside of the Kestrels pairing, but Thomas coming around on the outside to join his partner, Mark Terry, for a 3-3. That will be our fourth in succession. Unless Stead gets through and he gets through into third place. Underneath Mark Terry for the point that will give Stoke a 4-2 and virtual, ga virtually guaranteed on the two points here at Luma Road tonight. Will then give Hackney four heats to pull eight points back, not be on the realms of possibility. On the other hand, Hackney at tired side. Thomas, though, belying that fact, coming around the outside. He wouldn't believe that he'd just been lying on the dog track five minutes previously. Thomas leads. Second is Pullen. Stead third. And at the back is Mark Terry. So Hackney not yet down and out. Thomas once more rescuing the situation, battling through into first place. This really does show the toughness of Speedway riders. Laid out on the dog track, comes back in the rerun comes from the back to get a win in heat number nine, Barry Thomas for Hackney, second in red Ashley Pullen, third in blue Ian Stead and fourth in yellow and black Mark Terry. 
A 3-3 drawn heat on the score now, Stoke 30 and Hackney 24. But there will be question marks as to whether that was a tactical error by the Hackney management because Mark Terry, depends on the rules this year, they keep changing them, but the rule used to be that members of the team from one to five only need to take one ride in the meeting. Well, Mark Terry had problems in his opening ride and given the tactical substitute right there in heat number nine, I think possibly to fulfill his two obliged programmed rides. But I'm wondering whether that ruling still exists. It may well be, it may be me that's in the wrong, but it looks like Hackney might have made a tactical mistake there in heat number nine. Four heats to go, six points separating the two sides. Stoke Potters with the advantage. On the inside in heat number 10 is Tom Owen. Next to him in yellow and black for Hackney, Andy Galvin. Three second places so far for the Kestrel. Tom Owen a win and a second, beaten only by Barry Thomas. Gate three in blue, Paul Thorpe. He's got six plus two bonus points, scoring well Thorpe and certainly gating well off the outside gates. And on the outside in white, Kevin Teager, one paid two from two starts. And the temptation to use Barry Thomas as a tactical substitute resisted here in Heat 10. Owen makes the gate, he's joined by Thorpe. We still get the 5-1 here, the match is over and done with. Barring a mathematical miracle. Owen first, Thorpe second. And the Kestrels third and fourth, just coming through on the inside of Thorpe is Galvin. He hasn't given up hope yet. His partner Tigar on the outside line. Galvin fighting through for second. And Hackney just about keeping themselves in the match. This will give Stoke an eight-point lead with three heats to go. Teams have come back from eight points down with three left to win. Oxford did it at Wimbledon in the League Cup. But that was a fresh side and Hackney on the end of a grueling tour. I don't know if they've got the fight. Well, they've certainly got the fight. I don't know if they've got the strength left. Leading the way, Tom Owen. Second, Andy Galvin. Third is Paul Thorpe. And fourth, Kevin Teager. On Galvin's making a move now up on Tom Owen. Can he get from last up to first? Around the final turn, Owen hugging the white line, moving up, blocking Galvin. Galvin's got the race on the inside. Oh, a blanket finish there in heat number 10. Well, it's up to the referee to split Andy Galvin and Tom Owen there. Third place in blue, Paul Thorpe. And fourth in white, Kevin Seeger. A fine race there, Andy Galvin certainly showing no signs of tiredness. There is the one thing, though, about these tours. Riders may get tired, but on the other hand, the camaraderie gets together and certainly they get race fit. Well, referee Alan Todd's verdict on that heat 10. A win in red for Tom Owen, second in yellow and black, Andy Galvin. So Galvin's efforts going unrewarded at the end. A fine race, though. Tom Owen the winner. Galvin second, Thorpe third, Teager fourth. A 4-2 to Stoke. They're almost home and dry now at 34 points to 26. Eight points up, three to go. Well, this could be the last chance for the Hackney Kestrels here at Stoke. Heat number 11 on the inside in red, Nigel Crabtree. Crabtree unbeaten after two starts. Next to him in white, Trevor Banks. He's got five from three. Gate three in blue, reserve change, Steve Bishop. Five page six from three. And the outside man in yellow and black, tactical change for Hackney. Barry Thomas, two wins and a zero from three. Crabtree makes the game. This could set the seal on things for the Potters because in third place, it's Steve Bishop. A 4-2 will give Stoke the points. A 3-3 and Hackney can still get a draw with two 5-1s in the last two races. And I'm sure Barry Thomas is aware of that. Going up on the shoulder of his partner, Trevor Banks, to protect the 3-3, although it's not unknown for Thomas tonight to overhaul the leader. And that man is Nigel Crabtree, the man in view in red. And Thomas coming into his sights behind him, rather. Crabtree leads. Thomas second. Banks is third. At the back is Steve Bishop. Crabtree on a maximum. Thomas dented Tom Owen's maximum. Can he do it again now with, Crab with uh, Nigel Crabtree and keep the Kestrels in the match? Eight point deficit for Stoke to protect in these final three races. And following this one, unless Thomas can get past Crabtree, it'll take two five ones in the last two races for Hackney to share the points. And there's a win, and that's virtually it now for Stoke. Nigel Crabtree, the winner. Second in yellow and black, Barry Thomas. Third in white, Trevor Banks. And fourth in blue, Steve Bishop. A 3-3 drawn heat. The score 37 to Stoke. 29 to Hackney. Two heats to go. Stoke almost there. Need two points from the final two races. 
to guarantee at least a draw. They need three from the final two races to win. Well, we have a delay before heat number 12 here at Stoke with the helmet colours of the two Hackney riders having to be changed, having been transposed by the pit staff. So Barry Thomas and his partner Kevin Teager both have the right colours now, Thomas in white, Teager in yellow and black. And the full lineup on the inside in red for Stoke, Tom Owen, the heat win will seal it. Next to him in yellow and black, Kevin Teager. Gate three in blue, Ian Stead. And gate four in white, Barry Thomas. 37-29, nothing less than two five ones will do for the Kestrels. So almost there now. Well, Stead has missed the gate, but Owen's out in front. Thomas coming around the outside. Not good enough for Hackney, though. If, even if Thomas gets past, his partner must go with him. And Tiga has not got the point so far. One third and two last. Looks like Hackney's brave fight may be ending here in heat number 12, despite a 4-2. I think we'll know all he needs is a second place to secure things for the signal potters. Holding back in second, letting Thomas go, holding out the rider in yellow and black, Kevin Seeger. And Hackney taking what is only their second heat advantage of the match at this moment. They had that 5-1 back in heat number five, following it up with a 4-2 here in heat 12, but it's not going to be enough. We'll leave them six points adrift with two heats remaining, with one heat rather remaining. And of course, that is too much to bridge in one heat. Thomas leads down the back straight. Second place man, Tom Owen, settling down for that second. Tiga making his move around the pit turn. Doesn't find much out there for him. A win for Barry Thomas, second in red, Tom Owen. Third in yellow and black, Kevin Tiga. And fourth in blue, Ian Stead. Hackney fighting to the end. But now Stoke are assured of the two National League points here at Luma Road tonight with a scoreline of 39 to the Signal Potters, 33 to the Hackney Kestrels, with one heat remaining. Trevor Banks in white and heat 13 for Hackney. Only one win in his uh, four starts, a fall the first time out, which seemed to unsettle him somewhat. A win in his second ride, a second in his third, and a third in his fourth. Next to him in blue, Ashley Pullen. Three points from three starts, a fairly quiet evening for Pullen. And the full lineup on the inside gate in yellow and black, Andy Galvin. Second place is in every race so far for Galvin. Next to him in blue, Ashley Pullen, gate three in white, Trevor Banks, gate four in red, Nigel Crabtree. Well, Crabtree on the maximum man makes the gate off four, heads them round the turn. Hackney second and third through Galvin and Banks, Pullen at the back. Disappointing evening for Ashley Pullen. But his lack of scoring, really protected though by the riding of Paul Thorpe. He scored seven, paid nine, a vital contribution from the second string berth for Thorpe. In the meantime though, Nigel Crabtree heading home for a maximum here in heat 13. Crabtree first, Galvin second, third is Banks and Pullen at the back. Well, Crabtree settling in more than well here at Stoke. It's been very good stuff. The former Newcastle Diamond, and former Newcastle riders serving Stoke very well in the shape of Tom Owen and Nigel Crabtree, the two men at the top of the score chart. One lap remaining of this National League match here at Luma Road. A 3-3 drawn heat on the cards. Galvin though moving up now on Crabtree. Out to try and deny Crabtree's maximum and get Galvin out of the second place berth for the first time this evening. It's a win though for Crabtree and a maximum. Second in yellow and black, Andy Galvin. Mr. Consistency straight through the meeting, five second places. Third place in white, Trevor Banks, and fourth in blue, the disappointing Ashley Pullen. Well, a wheelie from Andy Galvin down the back straight. It can't take the gloss away, though, from Nigel Crabtree's maximum. A 3-3 drawn heat rounds up events here at Stoke here tonight, and the final score, Stoke Signal Potters 42, Hackney Kestrels 36, and a fighting performance by Hackney, but Stoke maintaining their position at the top of the National League. And Nigel Crabtree getting the bumps in celebration of that maximum.
Yeah. Well, let's take a look now at the score as in tonight's match. For Stoke, Tom Owen, 10 points. Paul Thorpe, 7 plus 2 bonus. A vital contribution from the number 2 berth. Number 3, Nigel Crabtree, a full maximum 12 points. Ian Stead, 5 plus 1 bonus. Ashley Pullen, 3. Steve Bishop, 5 plus 1 bonus. And Graham Jones, not showing his full potential here tonight, failing to score. Total of 42 for Stoke and for Hackney. Trevor Banks, 7 plus 2 bonus. Mark Terry, 1 point. Barry Thomas, 11. Andy Galvin, 10 plus 1 bonus. Kevin Teager, 2 plus 1. Paul Whitaker, 1 plus 1. Lyndon Warner, an impressive 4 plus 1 bonus. Hackney, really, the points coming from three men. Barry Thomas on 11, Galvin on 10, and Trevor Banks on 7. Between them scoring 28 out of the total of 36. And so with that final scoreline of 42 points to Stoke and 36 to Hackney, let's take a trip down to the pits. So Crabtree, a maximum tonight. You certainly seem to be settling in here at Luma Road. Yeah, well, um, I was ready for it tonight, really, because last week um, I cracked two crankcases on both engines last week, so... It was a bit of a signal last week and then tonight I've picked another engine up for tonight and everything's gone right and it was just one of them nights where you don't seem to be able to do anything wrong. You're on a Westlake, are you? Yeah, that's right, Westlake, yeah. And of course, this Stoke circuit, it's got a, f a few similarities with your previous track at Scunthorpe, but it seems to be adapting pretty well to the change. Yeah, well, when I came here last year, I only I came here for three meetings last year and I won every race but for two and two seconds, so I, I had a good record here last year and I like this track here, so... You know, that's what made me come here in the winter, so yeah, it's going, going well. Now, of course, the team's top of the league. It's extended its lead tonight with two points. How do you see the rest of the season going? Well, uh, it's going to take a good team to knock us off top because um, we're, everybody is determined now we've got to top to stop at top. And uh, like the promoters, John, Ray and Fred, they've all spent a lot of money and a lot of time putting a team together over the winter. And I think it's up to us now to keep it there for them. Now, of course, uh, I think it's the first time you've been in a, a table-topping team since your days in Newcastle, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. But in my days at Newcastle, I were only there as sort of a stopgap. I think somebody to bung in when there were nobody else, I think. So we're never doing very well in them days. Well, of course, your former twin spearhead with another former diamond, Tom Owen. Yeah, I think that's got a lot to do with why I'm going sort of better, I think, this year. Because I came here and I wanted, I'd like to finish top of the averages and represent Stoke at Wimbledon. So I've got to keep, you know, I've got to try and, you know, Tom's keeping me on my toes all the time. And I think Tom said to me, he says, I'm keeping him on his toes. So it's good for both of us, which is good for the team. And a good blend of youth at the tail end as well. There's some outstanding youngsters coming through here, aren't there? Yeah, well, that Graham Jones, um, he's going to be something special, I think, is Graham Jones. He's only started riding in winter because he broke his leg on grass uh, last summer. And he decided to have a go at Speedway over the winter just to get his legs strengthened. And then he decided to take up Speedway and Stoke was chasing him for a while. And he eventually agreed to sign for Stoke and he's, been, he's going to be something special, he's Graham Jones. So it's a good blend really, yourself and uh, Tom Owen up at the top and the youngsters getting the points like Paul Thorpe did tonight. It looks like a successful blend, doesn't it? Oh yeah, definitely, because everybody is capable of scoring a lot of points. Um, Thorpe, well... Uh, Thorpe and Steve Bishop instead, they never know when they're beaten, they just keep going and going and going, they never know when they're beaten. So, things are looking pretty good. Well, you're in the next race now, I believe. Uh, a win in the second half, you're in the second half final. Good luck for the final, Nigel, thank you very much. Thanks very much. So it's Middlesbrough, really. So, you know, I find it a bit difficult for the small tracks, but I think, you know, you've just got to try and stick in and try and master them. And, of course, the easier trips now to the more local tracks during the rest of the year, isn't it? Yeah, we've got uh, Canterbury to look forward to and Peterborough um, and Boston, you know. They're quite big tracks, which I like riding on the bigger tracks. Tonight, I like riding here tonight, but as I say, I crashed in the first race and uh, had another crash. I didn't really have a, a, a very good meeting tonight, but uh, I enjoyed it still the same, you know. Well, it's a very good effort from Hackney to get 36. Congratulations, okay. Trevor. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you very much. Well, hello and welcome to the Olwalton Raceway for this week's National League Match of the Week. And we've picked a wet evening to come here. The rain has just started to fall here at Peterborough. Dark grey skies all around the Olwalton showground. The East of England showground, by the way, if you're interested. This, of course, is the actual uh, track for the... Um, presentation show, presentation of horses and so on during their East Anglian show once a year. Of course, more regularly used for the sport of speedway racing and tonight we have for you a National League match between the Peterborough Skoda Panthers and the Hackney Kestrels. Well, Peterborough rock bottom of the National League at the moment.